Renegade Generation. I'm your host, Sarah McFadden. With me today, I have Rory Turner, a well-known artist in Sacramento. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your art? Sure. I draw a cartoon that's called We Pals, W-E-E-P-A-L-S. I've been drawing it for 25 years now, uh, daily and Sunday. It consists of, I don't know how many kids now, about 14 kids of <laughs> various ethnic backgrounds. I started, well, let me tell you how I started the strip. First of all, I became a friends, became friends with uh, Charles Schultz, who draws okay. Peanuts, some 25, 27 years ago. And at that time, I decided, as a joke, to redraw all the Peanuts characters as black children. And I was going to present it to Sparky, we all call Charles Schultz Sparky. I was going to present it to him and say, this is Peanuts from a black perspective. Once I got it on the paper, this was my Charlie Brown. This is Nipper. Once I got it on paper, I decided, hey, this is pretty good. So I began to, at, prior to that, I was talking to other cartoonists about adding a touch of color in their comic strip. Mm -hmm. But black people, but uh, Asian people, but Latinos, etc. And I said, well, why don't I do it myself? So I began to create We Pals. And did 25 you, years ago, they... Did you always have aspirations of being a professional artist, or...? I always wanted to be a cartoonist, period. Did you study, have you studied, like, in a structured classroom, or is it just a natural talent you just started with? A natural talent, but uh, what you do is, what I did anyway, was to study the work of other cartoonists, pick up, go to the library, pick out books. You can, you can find books on any subject you wish, so I used to, that's what I used to do. do you, you mentioned that you use all different cultures. Do you find it hard to keep the stereotypes that are so, so well enforced here in, in America out of the cartoons and out of your characters? Well, I, I deal with the stereotypes. I, I put the stereotypes at rest. In other words, I will, I will puncture the stereotypes mm -hmm. as, as often as possible. And th it's good for me because I, you know, like uh, one of the kids has a s stereotyping machine. So <laughs> that's, I deal with that sort of thing. And I, I anytime, the problem is, is that uh, after 25 years of doing it daily and Sunday, you started to repeat yourself. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you have in your Sunday newspaper, there's a, 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 a section called Soul Corner. How do you right. choose the men and women that are featured in that? I started. I thought it was going to be easy. I was going to do it for, for, for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. At that time, when I started, it was Black History Week. And I was doing my research, and I, was, I found some material, and I got excited about it. Well, the more, the more I learned about, the more things I discovered, uh, the more sharing I was doing. I said, this is great for people to know. And, mm -hmm. and I just kept going, and I've been doing it ever since. And now I've reached this, a point where people all over the country are sending me information about various people. In fact, even the Navy Department has sent me material, the Army, and uh, but what I have to do is double check it to be sure that I'm, I'm, I'm right, because I came up a little wrong a couple of times, and people will let you know. <laughs> yeah. um, do, you, do you use group brainstorming when you have an idea section, or do you, do you often play off of other people's ideas? Like I play off of other people's ideas. I find a, a lot of ideas in a party situation. Mm -hmm. With people having a wonderful time. I'm expecting this holiday season to give me a lot of inf material. So you go to a party and you listen to people talking and they had a drink or two and they say something really funny. <laughs> then you sneak off into the bathroom, you write it down. <laughs> <laughs> and you use it later. And you know that very same person that reads, reads the, the cartoon mm -hmm. and the person who said it will say to me, hey, that was a funny, funny guy. Yeah, yeah. And I say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, do you usually run in circles of, of artists? Do you find them easier to relate to socially because there's so many different demands for an artist? Well, yeah, I do relate to, uh, but we don't see each other that often mm -hmm. uh, because we're all living in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, we get together once a year. Last year, last May, we all went, uh, if you can believe this, all the cartoonists went on a cruise to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. There were 200 cartoons <laughs> on board. <laughs> but you know, nobody fell over. Nobody <laughs> fell over. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And it was, you know, talking, talking business, talking about. Okay. It's a, cartooning is probably the most competitive yeah. business there is because when you look at the comic page, yeah. it only can allow so many comic strips on that mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. If one com cartoon comes out, I mean, if another car one cartoon's coming in, 
one has to come out. Okay. So they're competing with one another. However, in, the f in spite of that fact, all the cartoons get together just famously. They're, it's a okay. wonderful business to be in. We're going to see a bit from, from one of the cartoons you've already done on, mm -hmm. on, on the playback. So we're going to okay. take a break and we'll be right back. Oh, ready? you got? Give me a nice fat one. Uh, he sure puts a lot of pizzazz into it. What's pizzazz mean? Not a darn thing if you don't hit the ball. Uh, Two down and one to go. There'll be no joy in Mudfield tonight. Uh, he hit it. Gave it a heck of a whack, too. Oh, rat, it's Cribbin Foul. It's curving all the way back to Old Man Purdy's plate glass window. I think we're about to hear it from the establishment. Stay right where you are. Don't move, you little gangsters. I'll have the bunch of you vandals put in jail for life or longer. Gee, we're sorry, Mr. Purdy. Sorry won't get me a new window. That window costs $20. Oh, we'll be happy to pay for it. Somehow. You're darn right you will. Wait a minute. Where do you get this wee stuff? Bolt Bottom here broke the window. Let him pay for it. That's not the way we do things in the Rainbow Club, Ralph. We're all for one and one for all. Well, I'm all for one and one for everybody but him. I don't care who pays for it. Either I get my $20 by tomorrow or you're all going to prison. My mom ain't gonna like that. She doesn't even let me watch prison pictures on television. And another thing. I'll see to it that you kids aren't ever allowed to play in this park again. I got influence in this town. This calls for an emergency meeting. Come on, everybody, to the clubhouse. I'm the double. <laughs> hey, Oliver, let's go. <laughs> Oliver, what's wrong with you? I hit the ball. I actually hit it. I picked up the bat and hit a baseball with it. In front of witnesses yet. Come on. You saw me, didn't you, Randy? I hit the ball. And now the treasurer will give us his report. Diz, how do we stand? Bread-wise, baby, we ain't exactly standing at all. We're more like laying low. Just give it to us in round figures. In round figures, we got 12 cents. In exact figures, we got a dime and an IOU. Even using the new math, that leaves us way shy of 20 big ones. Gosh, guys, I'm really sorry I got us into this mess. You ought to be, you fat-headed. Knock it off, Ralph. We don't have time for that. We got a problem to solve. I got an idea. If we each got an advance on our allowance... Oh. Won't work, man. I'm overdrawn already. And the 
stands now, I'm not due for my next allowance until sometime around my 24th birthday. That was a cut from a 1970 TV show that Moore was involved in animating. What is the difference between TV and, and, and commercial, like regular just drawing instead of animation? Well, uh, animation requires about, uh, oh, about 20 animators, 20 people actually drawing it. I didn't draw any of that that you just saw. They're, they're my characters, but I had nothing to do with it. Only thing I did was to draw, uh, help to draw the storyboards and then lay out the characters, to draw the characters side by side with all the colors mm -hmm. of their clothing so each animator would know what not only what the character would look like, but what the color of his clothes were and how tall was he in relationship to the next character. Mm -hmm. Now we did something like 17 shows over, over two seasons mm -hmm. and uh, it was a really every Saturday it came on. It's called Kid Power. What I'd have to do is to go to I'd go to New York and then I'd talk, consult with it, because it was a network show. I would talk to ABC, which was a fun part because I love New York and I'd be there two or three days having a good time. And then uh, we'd talk about the show with, uh, oh, I, I wish I could remember the name of the, this educational college in uh, educational services in New York that over looked over our shoulders so to speak to make sure that every you know all the I's were dotted and T's were crossed mm -hmm. and that we were approaching uh, everything properly because each show had a message each show said something where the, and, but the idea was not to to let the kid know that he was being taught something have you ever tried animation with. yourself or do you just stick oh to yeah the animation but you but while you were looking at the animation, what you were actually seeing were 17 drawings per second. So one person could not do an animated, animated show. It's impossible. I mean, it would take you maybe 10, 15 years, but <laughs> time you would. I know that some yeah. people use like models so that the continuity is there and you can see the, see the character from all sides. Have you tried that? Well, what we do, actually, when you're doing animation, what you do is trace. You trace, you know, you draw the character, and then you, first the character is in one position, and you, you redraw it mm -hmm. just by tracing it, and then change the position of the, of the legs and the arms. Mm -hmm. You know what, the, what happens to the arms, what happens to the legs yeah. as you you're moving. Sometimes you just move the background, because mm -hmm. the, the, the foreground is drawn separate from the background. We, we draw it on, on, on celluloid. Mm -hmm. so that you can see right through it. And so that when you have your background, the whole neighborhood is drawn mm -hmm. and it's laid out there. Will you show us a, an example? Well, I can, I can make an attempt. <laughs> now let's say that, it would be better if this was turned around, but let's okay. say this is your background. Let's say this is your, this is your neighborhood. I'll just do this very roughly and then you got your tree. Uh, maybe I'll label that tree. <laughs> And let's say this is a fence and another house. And now that's your neighborhood. You got your cloud up there. Now you got your separate sheet of paper in which you have you place you got your characters running or whatever. Then you uh you can do the seventeen times for one second. <laughs> you know, for one second of film. Mm -hmm. You stop, you, your film is taking 24 frames per second, mm -hmm. a normal movie camera. Mm -hmm. So what you, you place it upside down and you, t and you point it down, you put your pictures in there, you take it one snap at a time. Then you change the, the drawing, take mm -hmm. another snap. Mm -hmm. It takes a while, mm -hmm. but uh, you can make the characters move. Do you think that sometimes TV is a more a more effective way of communication because it has the possibility to reach more people? Well, no, TV just about ruined the uh, animation because it's, you have to do it so fast. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, it's faster. You don't see animation at 17 frames per second anymore, except Disney. Disney does it still 24 frames. Roger Rabbit and all the current ones that he does is 24 frames uh -huh. per second. Uh, Peanut still does 17 frames per second. I would do 17 frames if I were asked to do another one. Uh -huh. uh, but most people do about 12, 10 frames. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. they have to do it so fast. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
and no background at all. Okay. Talking head, so to speak. Yeah. You mentioned before about you you would use the idea of the Peanuts characters. Did you mm -hmm. give them your own personality? How do you come up with the personalities for them? Personalities of people that I knew. Really? Some people that I went to school with, and some were very close friends, and some in my own family. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just so they they haven't changed. The character haven't changed, but maybe the, the people that they were. So uh, the character that you used in the in the Wee Pals that we saw, the Kid Power. Mm -hmm. Do you use those? Do you are you still working with those same characters? I use those characters every day in the comic strip. They're for Wee Pals also. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have yeah. they have they taken different kind of roads and kind of grown up a little bit at all? Or are they still the same age? No, they're still the same age. Only people that have changed ages were uh, Randy, uh, Ralph. And, well, see, Ralph was, was created especially for the television. Mm -hmm. And I intended to get rid of him right away, but I couldn't. Because he is too important to me. Uh -huh. Do you kind of get to know your characters and make them oh, almost real them, yeah. to yourself? I know them, yeah, very well. And, and what's, what's good about it is that others know them, too. I'm saying others, I'm talking, mm -hmm. referring to the syndicate. Do you know what the syndicate is? The syndicate is an I organization that supplies my news, my, my cartoon to various newspapers. Uh -huh. Okay. So when I meet my work to them, they're located in New York. Mm -hmm. When they see something wrong, they will call me, let me know, and it's, they will, if I try to change one of the characters' personality, Sybil, for instance, someone might call me from New York and say, you know, Sybil really wouldn't do that. Uh -huh. I say, you're <laughs> right, you're right, and uh -huh. I, I'm going to change uh -huh. it. Um, you talked about syndication. That's a big step. What did you feel like when that first, when you were first syndicated? I had the biggest party you could ever imagine. <laughs> I was afraid to go to sleep because I thought it was a whole thing was a dream. But it, it, for those two days, it was fantastic. I never had a day like that since. <laughs> it was um, wonderful. Also, you celebrated the 25th anniversary of We Pals, didn't mm -hmm. you? Recently, how did you how did you celebrate that? I had a big party at the house. Open. Invited everybody that I knew. <laughs> I had a wonderful time. The producer was there. Want me to tell you what he did? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what did um? What would you suggest for someone who's starting out, um, to who wants to be a cartoonist? How would you suggest that they try to become a professional and become syndicated? It depends largely on how on what stage you're talking about. High school or talking about uh, junior high school. Uh, someone in high school. school. Someone, someone in high, high school. school. Well, first I would study what, what's I'd study the art. Mm -hmm. What's going on past? What's what's been done? Mm -hmm. What are the masters like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, study why they were so popular. Find out why. Copy their work for a while. And see what you can see. The only way you can really know what a kid, what an artist was, or a cartoonist was doing with his work is by f doing it. Actually doing mm -hmm. it. Copy mm -hmm. his work before. Then you decide. Then you start to create characters. When you create a character, know who he is. Mm -hmm. Study that character. Mm -hmm. Write, write it down. Say what she's, what, he, what this character is all about, and mm -hmm. what his outlook on life is. What Do his politics is, or if he has such. Uh -huh. Everything. Just like you, if you're writing a story, you know, a, uh, a film mm -hmm. a script or anything. You'd, you'd want to know all these things before you started. Mm -hmm. A cartoonist is a, is a playwright. He okay. has uh, the cartoon is his stage. Those he has those characters or his actors and actresses are waiting for something to say. Mm -hmm. You give mm -hmm. him something. Mm -hmm. You also the director. You must set. It's another thing you need to do is watch movies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see how they set the scene, mm -hmm. and be sure that you know you don't want to do this. Each panel will be this, have mm -hmm. the same direction mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. each day the same thing you want to do some tricks okay, okay see what the other cartoonists are doing with it okay um what kind of things where do you where, how do you come up with storylines are they things that you think are important to you to bring in there are two there are a number of ways one of the, the most important one for me depending on what kind of strip you're doing mm -hmm. for me it's it's uh, newspapers and uh, and mm -hmm. news magazines like Time and Newsweek. So you find out what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, the war, for instance. But you mm -hmm. got to be careful with things like that because mm -hmm. you got to remember when you're doing a cartoon, you're working for the, on the dailies, you're working six weeks in advance. What okay. was in today's okay. paper was submitted by you six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. What was in the today in Sunday's newspaper was submitted 13 weeks ago. So you cannot commit yourself to mm -hmm. 
So it's something that's apt to change. Okay. Okay. So you wouldn't want to get into the to the Far East and then by the time the access printed. Yeah, the people are killing each other. Right. You know? Right. So you'd have to be you have to take that and all those things into consideration. Okay, I, I know you have a lot of morals and, and ethics in your in your cartooning and in, in your messages. It, was that a conscious choice or is that just something that you thought was important and I think it's a cartoonist can can only be himself. So it's that's me. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. and you can't hide. You know, a writer can only be uh -huh. only be himself or herself. So you must do what you think. And not you don't okay. say, I'm gonna tell these people. You don't do that. You say this is what this is what I did. Did your family give you that background? Did they help you in, did they support you to become a cartoonist, become a professional artist? Oh yeah. They yeah. did? Yeah, I didn't know how difficult it was. <laughs> I really didn't, I had no idea that, uh, I, when I woke up to the fact that how difficult it was, was I was in New York at a, well, at one of those regular monthly, well yearly, mm -hmm. National Cartoon Society gathering in okay. which we make, you know, the best cartoons of the year, that all mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I suddenly realized all the cartoonists, all the best known cartoonists were, were in that room mm -hmm. with their wives and, and or their significant others or whatever. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And yet there was only about 200 people in the room. Right. And I said, my God, this is a, sort of an exclusive business, isn't it? Only then did I realize how, how difficult mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I didn't. Do you belong to more than one organization for cartoonists? Or is oh, there, yeah, so? yeah. Do you but think that helps to be one. around people who are in the same line well, of work? Oh yeah, you need to talk. You need to um, you need to discuss it. You need to find out. You have to refresh yourself. I also teach sometimes, and and that help that's helpful too because I forget uh -huh. why I'm doing that. A, a student may ask me, "Why do you do it that way?" Well, I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, so I have to go back and find out. And sometimes you get a fresh idea from the student, a new way of doing things. Since all your characters are children, do you find it necessary to be around kids a lot, or do you? Oh yeah, yeah. Have you I always had an easy time to relating to children? Well, I visit school. Oh yeah, I'm just a big kid. The gray hair and the mustache, <laughs> that's, that's something I put on. <laughs> uh, I go to visit schools a lot and visit with kids and uh -huh. talk and draw uh -huh. and listen. Do you think that being being visible in the public is something important for an artist to do to set role models and? Not necessarily. It's important to me. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. just important to me. I wouldn't tell any other cartoonists or artists that they would should do that. Uh huh. I'm a hand. <laughs> <laughs> I feed on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned before you were syndicated. What kind of papers are you published in? Just daily, daily newspapers throughout the throughout the country, and I'm in Jamaica, and. Stars and Stripes and the European Theater. So how many how many papers all together? Do you well, it's down idea? from 100, 109. It's down to about in the 70s. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, what is your target audience for your for your cartooning mostly children, or is it also for people who understand more? No, um, I thought I, I dealt with that a long time. I had to deal with that a long time because I thought when you if you target your material, then that means you're gonna you're gonna sit down and you try to you're gonna try to figure out what the person uh -huh. cares for. Right, right. I do it for me. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. just draw it for me and I try to satisfy myself and hope that others will like it too. Um, did you start cartooning because you're in love with drawing or because you wanted to get a message across? Well, I couldn't hit a curveball, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> to do something. <laughs> no, I just, I love to draw. I love to make people smile. I just like the idea of, of, of drawing. Yeah, I just grew up with it and just kept going. Okay. Never stopped. Okay. Okay. Um, do you, how did you decide, like, did you just decide, did you get like an, an opening into the field and went with it, or how do you, how do you really get into the field? No, I, uh, with me, it was a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, I did in Oakland. Oakland, mm -hmm. the Oakland Trivium was, mm -hmm. had, a, had a page for kids mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. which you could send your material in there, and I used to send cartoons. He'd win for the prizes, Jack Knight. <laughs> so I always feel like a pretty good cartoonist. And then I, <clears throat> I didn't, I wasn't too serious about it, so I went to the service. I kept drawing all, all the uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. Then I discovered that by drawing, I could uh, do that and uh -huh. not march and shoot guns and things like that. So uh -huh. I, could, I became a bona fide cartoonist while I was in the service. And was it easy? You just went out and said, I'm a cartoonist, hire me to draw? 
No, it wasn't that easy. You know, uh, I kept, once I did that, I was, I was being published all the time when I was in the service. Okay. But of course, I wasn't getting paid for that. But then when I got out of the service, I decided I wanted to be a cartoonist, and I kept sending my work and visiting different people, and nothing was happening. So I, I, I used to had a regular job. Uh -huh. I say regular job, but like cartooning is not a job. <laughs> but I, I kept sending my work to, to magazines throughout the country. Then pretty soon I started selling to magazines like mm -hmm. Saturday Evening Post, mm -hmm. uh, American. A lot of these magazines are no longer around anymore, uh -huh. but uh, just before TV was so interesting. Uh -huh. Do you work structured hours or do you just kind no, of no. win? That's the beautiful thing about uh, drawing cartoons. <laughs> you, you, you work, you pick your own time. Mm -hmm. However, you may work 14 hours in one day mm -hmm. if you're behind. Mm -hmm. Well, you may not work it out. Yeah. You know? And you may just walk around trying to get some ideas. That's the hard part about being a cartoonist, finding that idea. Uh -huh. You know, that uh -huh. you can wake up. You, if, you, if ideas were easy, then you could get so far ahead that uh -huh. you wouldn't have right. to worry about it. Right, right. Um, what kind of environments do you find easy to work in? Like, just at, do you work at home? Yeah, well, I've learned to work in, so I do a lot of traveling. Uh -huh. So with these, the certain kind of pins I use, I work in hotel rooms, <laughs> I work at home, uh -huh. I work at the, the studio. I'm, at, when I'm visiting friends, I can I can work at almost any. I get a lap board. I can work on a lap board. You mentioned your pens. Are there? You have a special preference of what kind of tools you use? Oh for, yeah. For writing, it's just yeah. a, a black felt tip pen. Felt black felt okay. tip pen. Yeah. Okay. I used to require inks and all, but everything is it's so high tech now. Everything uh -huh. the, the material that they uh -huh. produce so good that you can use almost anything. I don't have to get set up. I used to worry about spilling ink on somebody's floor, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I started using other stuff. Um, what do you do when you get stuck for an idea? Like, go for a long walk. Really? Yeah, and then I do. The, the, another thing that works for me is to pick up, pick up a, a book that's very serious. Anything that you you don't have to like it. Uh -huh. It could be some. It could be on nursing. It could be medical profession. It could be the law. Or anything serious. Uh -huh. Go as far as you can, reading it, and then. Put it down and pick up a fun book, a cartoon book. Pick up a collection of Peanuts, of B.C., or, or Calvin and Hobbes. And the clash between what you just mm -hmm. read and what you're reading now creates, for me, creates new, new avenues of okay. thought. Thank you for joining us for New Generation. I'll see you next week. Sarah McFadden, this is New Generations. I'm here today with Maury Turner, a local artist, who um, talking about Wee Pals, Kid Power, and different different shows he's worked on. Um, tell us a little bit about your work. Well, I'm drawing now, <coughs> excuse me, the characters that I've been drawing for some 25 years. These are the different kids who are still ranging the age of five to seven years <laughs> old. How long have you been doing this cartoon strip? 25 years. 25 years? Uh -huh. It's been in my head a couple of years prior to, the, to the, the starting date, so we can say it's been with me 27, 28 years. 
How did you come up with the idea of these children? A lot of these kids were, I went to school with. This kid happens to be me. <laughs> I saw pictures of myself wearing a baseball cap. This is a Confederate hat, which I thought if I never had, if I ever had one, I would probably wear it. <laughs> <coughs> this is my, <coughs> excuse me, my alter ego. That is to say, I would, he says and does things that I would have, if I had the guts, I would have, I would do them myself. Now, this, this is not how Diz started out his cartoon life. He is, you notice he's got the modern haircut with the little tail on the, on the end there. But, but here's how he started his cartoon existence. He wore, he wore shades. Kids ask him, why do you wear shades all the time? He said, I'm gonna be an astronaut. <laughs> What do you mean? What's that got to do with? Where they said I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the first dude on the moon. So he wore shades. How do you come up with characters of like the faces? Are, are they do they look like that? Doesn't look much to, like you to me. No. But do you get do you get the faces? Yeah, from when I was younger, maybe. <laughs> no, I get the faces. I I try to deal with the faces. In some cases, this one, Jerry. Jerry happens to be Jewish. I, saw, I have a friend, a very close friend, who happens to be Jewish. His name is Sid. And I saw a picture of Sid when he was a little kid, and he had red head and freckled face. And I said, you're going to be in my comic book. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to do a lot of Jewish things with him, and I wanted to have him say and get into a lot of Jewish situations. But I was afraid I didn't want to offend anyone. So instead of doing that, so he introduced me to his rabbi, uh -huh. Jerry Danzig at the time. And he, he checked me out on all my Jewishness. So I gave him this. So his name has been, that's 25 years ago, Jerry. I gave him the rabbi's name. And the rabbi and I also, Sid and I are still good friends. Because <laughs> then there's Ralph, which is a sound. Ralph was created when we did a television show. We did a show in 72, and we were asked to do, to, they wanted a, Ralph didn't exist, and they wanted a kid as a, as a heavy. And so I said, how would it be if I, I didn't want to lose the money, you know, <laughs> so I said, how would it be if I gave you a kid like you're asking? So that's why I, I drew him without much thought, and mm -hmm. that's why it's so simplistic. Okay. And they said, well, what's his name? And I said, Ralph? And they said, Ralph? I said, yeah. So I guess <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's, how I got, that's how he got his name. Yeah. Oliver is a resident intellectual. I got his name from Oliver Twist. I saw the, the show Oliver Twist in San Francisco when, it, when uh, 25 years ago. When mm -hmm. I, I said, that's, that's my character. And this is Randy. Randy is my son. I said, Randy is so cool, he couldn't even walk straight. And this was Randy at the, at the time. Randy has, his hair has changed too. He now wears the, he doesn't wear a tail, but uh, he, wears a, he has a little, two grooves in his, in his haircut there. I notice you find it really easy to doodle and talk at the same time. Is that how you've always been? Has art always just come real naturally to you? Yeah, it's it's come natural to me. But with a little practice, you keep you when I'm I'm doodling now. But when I'm really doing a uh, a cartoon, I only have three minute, three inches, okay, three and a half inches actually to work with. So what I do first, let's say this is about three and a half. What I have to do first is I set it up. I set it up with circles. That's my character. All right. Now, I got. Him. I know he fits. I know I can get him all in. Then I start with my pencil. I do the hat. Do the face. Then I do the body. Now, all this is in pencil. All right. Once I'm satisfied with that whole thing there, the dialogue and all, mm -hmm. the next thing I do is I take a speedball lettering pen. 
and I let her in my dialogue, and I make my balloon, and then I take my my pen and I ink, ink it all in. Then I take my brush and put in all my solid blacks where they belong. A little bit of there, I had a little shadow underneath, bit there. Has art taken you in any kind of special places? Because I know you know. Oh, thought yeah, that's a wonderful question. It's taken me, well, the first one, it's taken me to Vietnam. <laughs> I know that's... When was that? In 1969. That's were, a crazy was, time to be in Vietnam. Well, there were six cartoonists that went to Vietnam. Uh, Bill, Bill Keane, who draws Family Circus. Uh, Will, Will Mullins, who's a great sports cartoonist. Myself. Uh, Howie Schneider, who draws Eek and Meek. And... I'm having trouble with names here. Mm -hmm. But there were six of us. Okay. And we went to, quote, entertain the troops in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We were there three weeks. So we went to, to Bangkok and a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of years ago, I went with another group of six cartoonists. We went to, again, visiting service servicemen in Greenland and uh, Iceland and uh, Newfoundland and uh, a lot of different places. And I, I go to, I visit schools a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, be, because I'm, uh, I am, and I enjoy talking to kids, I enjoy entertaining with kids. And then we did the promo for the show, so I did a, a lot of moving around for that and for the, tele on for the books. So I find myself in a lot of different, different cities, mm -hmm. you know, Philadelphia, New York, and uh, I love it. I love the crap. At somebody else's expense, that's wonderful. Okay. Since you draw so much about kids, do you find it necessary to be around children a lot? Do you enjoy that? I enjoy it. I, would, I think I'd be around kids if I wasn't drawing about kids. I just love them. Uh, it helps me to stay young, too. <laughs> plus, plus, there's um, you need to know uh, what kids are saying. Not, not only what they're saying, how they're saying it, because you can get trapped into uh, a slang that, that will date the, the strip. And you have to keep up, keep things alive. Do you use certain like political events in your cartoons? Oh yeah, I do that a lot. I, uh, but I have to be again. I have to be very careful that the, that the event will not change in the, in the six weeks that that from the time that I draw it to the time that it appears. I don't want anything to, to change. In fact, when I do Soul Corner, you mentioned we talked about Soul Corner earlier, and you were talking. I'm you see. I, I worry when there's somebody, I, I do something on somebody and their, their whole life changes. I, I just did uh, Norton. I wish I could remember her first name. I, fortunately, it's, it's not out yet. And I, the last thing I said about her was she was a professor in, Mass, in Georgetown. Well, I heard last night, this last election, she became a congresswoman. So if I was out there with that, with that mm -hmm. information, the information I have is not wrong, mm -hmm. but it's certainly behind in it. And you don't want people to know that, that mm -hmm. you're doing this 13 weeks ahead of time. Did you find it, as an artist, just something that you wanted to do to bring morals and different things like that in? Or, do you, or is it something that just happened because it's what you're interested in drawing about? It just happened because that's what I'm all about. And things that you, you know, you can't escape that. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, even interp you know, you dance, don't you? Mm -hmm. And if when you inter when you do dance interpretation, it's going to be you. It's not going to be anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. It's going to be what you feel. Do you yeah. find it hard to keep like well-known stereotypes out of your characters because you have such a multicultural, you know, st amount of characters that you use? I enjoy using the, the stereotype. I, I enjoy popping the you know the, the old thing about uh, well. You know, the, the quiet Asian, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. <laughs> so I you know, jab that, you know. Now I, I've got a new character I'm working on. I, have, I haven't quite, I'm not quite satisfied with him. Uh, he's going to be from the Middle East. And I'm, I imagine we're getting a lot of trouble with him when he, at the start, but we're going to try it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Lisa is his name. Okay, um, could you draw Sybil Rights? I'm, oh, I, I think she's, she's one of my favorite characters from reading it. I'm going to draw Sybil Rights before and after, okay. Have you ever taken any structured art classes? Like any, did you go to college and study art? No, no, I took, uh, took art in high school and I was just drawing all the time. 
Has your have you always known that this is exactly what you want to do, or has it I've been kind of? I've always known that. Yeah, always. What, what would you suggest for someone who's trying to get into the arts or into cartooning? I mean, especially, what kind of things do you have to know? What kind of people do you have to know? Well, it's not it's not necessary who you know. It's 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 what you do with what you the talents that you have, and how you hone it. And here, let me get these cornrows. See. That's the new thing with her. And develop your characters, know who those characters are, know what they will or will not do, what they're, find out what they're all about. Do you find yourself relating to your characters and bringing, if, you are, if you're having a problem, do you bring that problem into your, into yeah. your, um, yeah. into your yeah. strip? And that's, that's a danger. That's a danger. If you're, if you're angry with something, you shouldn't draw while you're doing it. Um, I have been angry at, well, I have been angry with, uh, with Ronald Reagan when he was president, and mm -hmm. it came into the strip and I got into a lot of trouble. Not a lot of trouble, but people wrote me and they wanted to know who they liked what I was, you know. So, Do you find like business and legal stuff getting in the way of your art? Business gets in the way. Uh, you see, when you were syndicated cartoonist, syndicated meaning that someone else is, is doing the selling mm -hmm. to the salesmen and they collect the money and they do all that. But you're responsible for for setting it. They don't take care of your, your mm -hmm. insurance. They don't mm -hmm. take care of your, your retirement. They don't take care of any of these things. You have to do that. They don't do your banking. I'm lousy at that, that bookkeeping and that kind of thing. So that gets in my way. I sometimes have to spend a full day just trying to get my, <laughs> my checking account straightened out. Do you find like timelines and deadlines oh, get in the way of the wow, artist? Wow, yeah, deadlines. That's a beautiful question because deadlines are a real, real tough thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you're doing something. I always try to keep something be, that that's not really dated. That mm -hmm. has a has a gag that's can be used at any time mm -hmm. that I can throw in there. And if I'm and sometimes you just can't can't get it in. And I was telling you about one I wanted to do. All my stuff is in, and I want to do one for Hanukkah, which is December the 11th. All my stuff is already in. I'm mailing it tomorrow, hopefully in time. Mm -hmm. I doubt it, but I hope I can get, make it in time. What what kind of thing? What, what did you go through? Did you ever have like a first rejection trying to get in to oh, the business? Oh, rejection is the name of the game. You can you can always get those. You still get. I still get rejections because sometimes you have a book idea and you. And and you send it to a publisher, and they'll reject it if they don't want it. That is nothing personal, mm -hmm. you know, but you've got to learn that that's part of the business. You, there are not that many cartoons mm -hmm. in the world, and, uh, yeah. and you're competing with a lot of people. So if you get rejected, it's not a big deal. What was the point when you said, oh, I'm a professional, I'm a cartoonist now, I'm making my whole living? Mm -hmm. How, when did that come? Did it come after your first, when you were first syndicated? It's a, it's a, it's in my, it's in your mind. No, it didn't. It came long before that. It came. I was working at. The, I was a police clerk at the Oakland Police Department, drawing cartoons and selling cartoons and magazines on the side. Mm -hmm. And I would say to people, they say, "What do you do for a living?" I say, "I'm a cartoonist, but right now I'm I'm working at right. the police department." Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. You can, okay. you're a dancer, aren't you? You know, I'm a dancer <laughs> right now. I'm right now. I'm you, you're doing an interview with me. Mm -hmm. So it's a mindset. You just tell yourself what you are, and you, that's what you'll be. Do you ever get away from these characters, and do you need like freelance work and different oh, stuff like that? Oh, I love to do that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. You know. Okay. Yeah, I've done. Um, I've done. Well, visiting schools and drawing different people. That that's one thing. Right now, I'm drawing. I'm doing. Um, uh, well, I just finished it. The book for the Oakland Police Department. Which they, they will be giving to kids. It's called uh, uh, on the on the earthquake. What to do about the earthquake? Can we see some of your characters from that? Yeah, that'd be sure. really interesting. That's, uh, that's another real timely thing that you've gotten involved with, which is really exciting. I'll show you the star of that. Is this? Does this? Do you do you find it hard to bring in different? Have always have time for everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm frustrated because there's so many things I want to do. 
do, to you, is, is going out to schools and doing different symposiums and stuff, is that an important part of being an artist? Do you think that's necessary to be publicly no, visible? No, it isn't. It's, in, it's important to me. It's just important to me as a cartoonist because that's, I think that's, I can't stand to stay in, a lot of guys can just stay in their studio and, and just draw. I can't stand to do that. What kind of environment is your favorite to work in? Is, is Quincy Quake on the, on the, <laughs> on, on the Richter the scale? scale, I love it. So what he does, what happens in this, in this particular book is, it is it's, a, it's a coloring book. Okay. And he says, this, this is so and so, and he does this, color him smart. Uh, each, each clue, each suggestion is a, is a is one page, so that the person can can drink that one page in. Then to color him smart. See, the coloring book is just a, it's an idea. It's not necessary that you color the book, but it's, it's just a, a way to get the message to the to the reader. You've mentioned spending time with different different artists that are in the same field as you are. Do you do you do you think that that's helpful to know, have someone oh, know what yeah. it's like. Oh yeah. Do you yeah. do you often just kind of sit down in a brainstorming kind of environment with yeah, more than talk, one person? Yeah, we talk about some of the, the, the some of the new things that, that are out in the, on the market or uh, doing things a different way. I have been trying to, to improve my lettering ever since I started. And then I hired somebody to do my lettering at one time and did, they did my lettering for it. And I felt that if I were to just keep doing my lettering because there's so much of it to do uh -huh. that if I just keep doing it, I'll improve. I think I'm improving, and I keep just trying different people tell me about different uh, uh -huh. other cartoonists will say, "Why don't you try this brand? I'll <laughs> try it, and I'll be happy with it for a long time. Then I get sick of it, you know, uh -huh. and I want to try something else." What's your favorite kind of like pens? You you mentioned. Do you always change and look for different things that you think might be more effective? I used to use a crow quill. Uh -huh. Which was so flexible, but so frustrating when it's new, uh -huh. because it just it just so hard. I mean, you break it in, it was so wonderful. Uh -huh. but you could almost use it like a brush. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, crow quill is not so practical for me because I'm of all the traveling I do, and you have to take ink with you, and you're going to spill ink on somebody's floor or something or at a hotel. So I started trying all these different markers, and uh -huh. and this one's I like this one it's called a pin stick, but it dries up really fast. And it doesn't, it only makes one line. I mean, it, there's no change in the line. How, is there any one person who's really strongly influenced your career? Like, are there people that you idolize or different oh, artists I, like oh, that? Oh, that's easy. That's <laughs> Charles Schultz. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Have you gotten to know him personally? Yeah. Yeah, I've been knowing him for many years now. That's, that's, that's neat, because I know as a dancer, I, I look to other dancers also. Um, do you, do you work like in a studio? Do you have a separate studio out of your home? Mm -hmm. You do. I must. I, I can't. I, if I had a studio in my home, I, that's what I'd be doing, drawing all the time. I mean, I'd get out of bed. As soon as I get an idea, I have to. I'd have to see it. Uh huh. What I used to do is I'd get an idea. If I wake up, you know, and I'd try to write the idea down, mm -hmm. and but it didn't work that way. So, I mean, you wake up. Uh -huh. So I what I would do is lay there and try to. Like let's say, let's say this quake idea, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I would say in the dark, mm -hmm. make a white word quake, real large on a drawing pad mm -hmm. to the side, so okay. that in the morning that I can I can know. You keep one that of these by the side me. of your bed. Yeah, okay. that will help me recover all the things I thought about that night. Is that one Usually. of your sources of ideas, is sleeping and then waking up all of a that sudden? That period, just between consciousness and going in, and mm -hmm. going to sleep, that little period is great. You can get a lot of stuff, but you can get it, you can get it done on paper. Um, how do you come up with your storylines? Do they just come to you in the middle of the night, like you were saying? Or? Sometimes, but you can't count on that. You have to create those yourself. Sometimes you have to sit down and, and what I call, take a trip in your own mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, you say, well, who, you know, who hasn't been in this trip a while? Uh -huh. I have a character here that I, where is she? Charlotte, who I don't uh, draw that often because the main reason is because Charlotte's in a wheelchair. Uh -huh. 
and it requires a lot of work, tools, art tools, rulers, and everything else to uh, to draw that wheelchair. So sometimes when I'm in a hurry, and I'm always in a hurry, I forget Charlotte. So I'll usually I'll sit down and I say, well, who have I used for a while? It's usually Charlotte. So I start thinking about her right away. Now, what has she done? I say, where where is she? What uh -huh. you know? What does polyester have to say to her? Where are they gone? And I draw. I might draw this and say, "Well, why? Why? Obviously, without without the dog, General Lee, we, she doesn't necessarily have to be going fast. Uh -huh. But now we see that General Lee is. He's giving us movement. Uh -huh. Now we want to know where is he going? Uh -huh. Are they? Is she going to school? If so, why? And what's happening on the way to school? And then you you might get an idea. Then if that doesn't work, you say, "Well, maybe she's going back home from school." Well, then you just and then you write everything that you could think of. Do you ever, have you introduced like any characters that are new since the 25 years ago when it started? Oh yeah, let's go, let's go back to the, I think most of the characters, Jerry, uh, who I told you about Jerry, and uh, Sally, Sally's deaf. Sally uh, talks with her hand, she just learns, yeah, and he, she, was, she taught him to, uh, He's teaching Diz to, to speak with his hand. He thinks that's great because he, now he can talk at, at the dinner table with his mouth full. Rocky's Native American, and uh, he's a Native American Sioux. And, and Jerry found out he was Native American in Sioux. He said, you don't look Sioux-ish. And that's the, that's, that's the. You're really great at playing on words. I mean, this is a civil rights and polyester. I love playing on words. That's yeah. And George, and George happens to be Asian. He gets his name from my father, who's not Asian. Connie, yeah. and Pablo. Um, I went to Kids on Campus when I was younger, and you were had some involvement with it. What was that involvement? What is your place with Kids on Campus? I've been. I guess the past four or five years, I've been working with the uh, with the Dawsons there, and teaching cartoons, basic cartoons. Mm -hmm. The idea mainly when you're doing a cartoon, I try to not to try so much not to teach cartooning because cartooning is so personal. It's try to teach you how to think, how, mm -hmm. how to come up with, with ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think because you of all that, you those lessons I, I taught you? I remember. Uh -huh. It was a long time ago, though. I'm not going to get test you at all. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that a lot of times that you see yourself as a role model and put yourself in that position? Yeah, I enjoy that position. Yeah. Um, do I'm you not afraid of that position either. Okay. Okay. For where did you? What is your background? How did you? How did you end up to be where you are today? How did I end did up? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, uh, I see what you're driving at. Um, I've always drawn, and I like to write, too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a combination of the two things. That, Did you uh, come straight out of high school and say, I'm going to be an artist, and here I am, and hire here me? Here I am, well, well, yeah, I did say that. Uh -huh. But I went into the service first. I was drafted into the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I... I said, here I am, Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an artist. And he used me as he utilized me as, right. an, at, as an artist, yeah. Was it interesting to go back to Vietnam after once having served in the service to see what was happening there then? Yeah, because it was totally, because when I was in the service, I had never seen, I had never seen action. I mean, I was always, I was in the South all the time. Uh -huh. you know. So I never, you know, I never saw anything. And then when I went to Vietnam, it was like, it's like being in a in a B movie. You know what mm -hmm. I mean by B yeah. movie, not a top rated movie. But it's just, this is I kept saying, you know, these war scenes are, are poorly done. I mean, they're not very good. So, and I couldn't. It was a hard thing for me to, to realize that that this was what was happening. It was mm -hmm. really a war. And only in one evening I was drawing it. We did a lot of drawing of, of servicemen. And one evening I drew a serviceman in. Uh, you know, I forgot what you call it, where they hang out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day, I saw him in in the hospital. He had been shot. That you know, and only then did I, you know, like what happened to you? You know, uh, well, of course he got shot. What else would happen to him? You know? Is there the stuff like that? Were you able to take home and use later? 
or did you did you write a book about it or yeah is it yeah I wrote well not a, not a large book I wrote uh, St. Joseph magazine I wrote uh, which is a Catholic uh, uh, magazine I'm mm -hmm. not Catholic but they were very interested in what I had to say mm -hmm. so and then I wrote an article for Ebony magazine which is a black the publication. I wrote one for them and then I drew some cartoons for on the subject because I couldn't stop thinking about, uh, I couldn't get it out of my mind. Mm -hmm. It's so intriguing to me from not yeah. being born even yeah. to have the opportunity to go there in, in a situation like that. Well, we did a, I did a lot of cartoons about the situation and uh, a lot of editorial cartoons too. A lot, of time it, a lot of my thoughts crept into the strip. A lot of which were rejected by the syndicate, and I understand why they did. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Do you find it mostly as a personal experience, like it just added to your personality, so drawing reflects still who you are today as something that happened back yeah, you then? You just keep adding, adding to that, adding to that. Uh, I, I took a young cartoonist to, uh, to, you know, he was trying to get started and wondered what it was, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, what did you notice about, about all these guys here? He said, they're all old. <laughs> okay. I said, well, they lived, you know, they mm -hmm. lived. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, they, I mean, you, if you start at 25 years old, what are you going to draw on? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. That's our show for tonight. Good night. <laughs>